So welcome to the relationship path. As you would have seen in the opening video, it said, you know, these days I have a relationship path for the groundwork and I have a skills path for the groundwork. And the skills path is what I was doing in the past. Uh, you know, when I was a professional horse trainer, I'd have horses come in, I've got to get them to do this, 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 and this, and this. And it's more about obedience. It's more about teaching them to do basically what they're told in a nice way, of course. But, and in the skills path, you will build some relationship from the teaching of the skills. The relationship path is more about working on the relationship first, and in the re working on the relationship, you tend to build the skills. But the, the, the order I kind of want to do things in these days that, this, that the relationship path works on, first thing, and like there's three things, three things I'm doing in order. The first thing is relaxation. The second thing is connection, and the third thing is the training. And in doing any of the things that I might suggest here in a minute, in doing any of those things, you may be working on all three of them at the same time. You may be working on one of them, you may be working on the first two, you may be working on all three of them. It just really depends on things. But what I've found is, you know, if you're working on some training stuff that helps with the relaxation, or you're working on the training stuff that helps with the connection, by the time you get to the training, it already works. So I've found it, doing stuff this way, it's just so much easier. But the, for the most part, since I've been doing this relationship path, I've been calling a lot of these exercise to do with the um, relationship path focus work and the reason I've been calling it focus work because a lot of it has to do with your horse's attention and where it is and it's very much like with humans if a human has uh, you know they say with humans if you're depressed you're living in the past if you're anxious you're living in the future and if you're peaceful you're living in the right now and if you're peaceful you're relaxed and so it's all about getting those horses you know getting them to relax a lot of it has to do with getting their focus and i think a lot of people in the past have had some confusion about that thing they're supposed to get their horses focused and hold their horses focused and not let the focus go and things like that but it's not about that it's just like in meditation if you if you haven't meditated or you've tried to meditate and found that you find it hard so you kind of gave up a lot of people give up meditating because they go, I just can't keep my mind on that one thing. And what you have to realize is you're not supposed to keep your mind on that one thing. If you were trying to meditate and you were focusing on your breathing and you start focusing on your breathing, you know, the air going in your nose, feeling your lungs fill up, feeling the air go out your nose, then you're thinking about what you're having for breakfast or something or other. As soon as you notice you think about something you're having for breakfast, you just go, oh, okay, and bring your attention back to your breathing. It's not about the ability to constantly hold your attention on your breathing it's about how many times can you bring it back when it wanders off and the focus work all this focus stuff is a little bit like that um, sometimes you'll be getting the horse to focus by asking for their attention and sometimes we're getting those horses to focus by letting them know how aware of them you are and that will get their focus but you know I want to give you some, what I want to do here is give you some suggestions about what videos to watch for different types of horses. And so I'll tell you the types of horses that I tend to see at clinics um, or I have people ask me about. There's usually horses who, that are very anxious and unaware of you. That's one category of horses, okay? Anxious and unaware of you would be a horse that's looking over there, will run into you, not even noticing you're there because they're looking at something over there. That's one category of horses. Another category of horse is one that is very aware of you and kind of shut down because of it. So they kind of, they will kind of stand there and look away a bit. So they don't tend to be wound up. They tend to, to not do much, but they tend to kind of look away a little bit like this. They are aware of you and your presence over, overwhelms them. And they're just like, mm, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. So that one, the first one, the anxious running around one, is unaware of you. This one here is aware of you and concerned about you, probably because of, of interactions they've had with humans in the past. Uh, those two are very, very common. And then the other ones, probably ones who've done a lot of groundwork and they're aware and responsive and just really have no bend and no connection. You know, when you ask them to do things, they'll do it, but they, they just don't connect with you. They have the incorrect bend, those sorts of things. Those are basically the three common kinds of horses I tend to see. 
And so if you have a very anxious and a horse that's very anxious and unaware of you, they're walking off, they're pushing into you, those sorts of things. Some good videos you could watch are, and the, probably the best one if your horse is really wound up, is creating the focus with a horse that's really wound up. That's the name of the video. And it was filmed at a horse expo in New Zealand with a, with a horse that goes to dressage competitions, but she comes in the round pen there and she's dragging this guy all over the place and she's really fixated on horses off in the distance. And um, that one would be very helpful because she's about as bad as they get. Um, another one is called Passive Leadership with an Anxious Warm Blood that was filmed at another horse expo. There's a couple like that. Um, they were less wound up but still, you know, reasonably oblivious of the handler. Those ones, I hope you forgot those kind of horse. Um, another one's called Passive Leadership and Focus Work. I think it was filmed at a horse expo. And another one is called Two Basic Steps to, create a con to Creating Connection with an Anxious Horse. So those ones would be good for you if, uh, if you've got a horse that's really unaware of you and is just walking all over the place. And the thing with all this is, is when you go through that stuff, you know, in two days time you might not have that horse. Then you may have a different kind of horse. Now you might have a horse that pays attention to you but doesn't have any bend or whatever. Then you would go to that thing. You might start out working with your horse that's unaware and responsive but has no bend going around you and sometime during the working of that it turns into a horse that's walking off and leaving you. Well then you would go back and do this. So, you know, the, everybody wants to know where's the starting point for, the, for all this relationship path? You know, focus work is something that's been referred to. Where's the starting point? It depends where your horse is at that day and depend and you know and then as the day goes on depends what your horse does during the day but those videos would be very good for that sort of a horse if you've got a shut down horse or a horse that is aware of you but kind of thinks away from you a little bit they're like that because people have asked too much of them and so asking them to do anything is not going to make them better like those other horses asking them to do things is going to make them worse so if you've got one of those look at a video called stress indicators watch that one Watch anything that has the t words matching steps in the title. Um, watch the, this one's important for all the horses, but the basics of asking a horse to move on the ground. Okay, if you're gonna ask them to move on the ground, you've gotta watch that one. So um, that, that last category, the horse that's very anxious and unaware of you, once you get them to where they're aware of you, they're a bit more focused, they're a bit more settled, then when you wanted to do something, you would watch that video, the basics of asking a horse to move on the ground. Uh, and there's another one called using energy and intention to help with the focus work. It's the same thing. So those ones uh, would be quite helpful for those sort of horses. And they're really the, the, you know, those are the two most common ones. That get. Oh, probably the other most common one is the one that's aware and responsive but has no bend going around you. Uh, if you have one of those, look at the basics of asking a horse to move on the ground. Um, look at any of the crab walk videos. The crab walk is something that's really good for helping horses uh, move and bend. And a lot of times those horses, what they can do is they can move easily, but they can't bend. So this, this exercise gets them to move in a bend. So they're not, you're not actually having them going off away from you. You're having them kind of move around you in a bend. Uh, there's one common problems in the crab walk. Uh, there's another one, how the crab walk can turn into more advanced work. So it's almost how you can use that crab walk to turn it into the basics of uh you know the the basics of asking a horse to move on the ground those are the the, the very basic stuff um let's say you've got a horse that you can't catch okay they're wild unhandled or just you know they're out in a pasture or don't want to ever get caught um with those ones i look at the stress indicators videos and there's a video called Working on the Beginning of Relaxation with a Wild or Unhandled Horse. And it's about noticing stress indicators from a long way back. Um, there's a video, I'd watch any of the videos of matching steps. You could match, a, match steps with a horse that's like that. Um, what else have I got there that would work for that? There's actually a, uh, a video called Creating Connection by Waiting While Catching. So if you are... Let's say you've got a horse you can catch him. You can just walk up to him and catch him quite easily. Sometimes those horses will just uh, stand there. I think what horses will do is they'll stand there to see what happens, to see who you are today. If you think about it, there's almost three ways you can catch a horse that's standing still. Okay, if there's a horse, you walk in your horse's pen, in his pasture, whatever, 
and let's say standing still facing diagonally kind of away from me like that. I think there's three things you can do. You can, number one, walk up and just catch him, okay? And they'll tend to stand there like, like this and you can just walk up and catch them. And I think if you walk up and catch a horse like that, you're telling the horse, I didn't, I didn't notice the fact that you didn't even notice me. Uh, you could do what I used to do and I'd walk in there if the horse didn't turn and face me, I'd put a little pressure on their hind end so they roll around towards me. And I think when you do that, you're telling the horse, I'm the guy who expects to be obedient. I noticed you didn't notice me and I'm expecting you to be obedient. And then the third one, which is this waiting while catching thing, is you could go in there and just get somewhere in the proximity of them and just stand there and wait. Just focus on your breathing and wait. And that video will show you, but in, in uh, you know, maybe two to five minutes, that horse might stand there and act like you're not there. And then eventually they'll kind of, the lights will come on, they'll blink and they'll turn and they'll come over to you and they're like, really? You waited for me? Instead of just catching me or making me come over to you, you waited for me? You must be pretty cool. And that, you can create a lot of connection with, with that one. But those are the, probably the, the, the three biggest, biggest things. And, and a lot of it has to do with your horse's mental state. You know, is he, if he's mentally over there and not aware of you, you've got to try to get his attention back here. Okay. If he's mentally aware of you, so aware of you that you're overpowering and like that, you cannot say, hey, I want your attention back over here because that one will tend to make those ones go inside even more. And so um, those ones you have to be a little bit careful with. And then the ones, the other ones, the, the ones who are, you know, obedient, but, and they're aware of you, but they don't have any bend going around you. A lot of times they have no connection either. When you ask them to go, they just go. But once they've heard the, the, re the, the request to go, they're just going. They're not connected with you. They're not mentally hooked with you. And I think once you get them mentally hooked with you, uh, I think a lot of things are completely different. I've found that, that when you come to the training part, the training's already done by the time they get to the training part. And a lot of the things I used to do in the past, I probably don't have to do anymore. And there's one other behavior. I don't see it a lot, but it's a horse that is worried about you but they're not leaving worried about you they kind of look at you and and kind of lean back and rock away from you but they're not leaving that one if you have one like that you can watch a video called creating connection with an anxious mustang it was filmed at a clinic and if you ever get that one usually you don't get that because usually if they're that worried they want to peel off or they show you some stress indicators, but every once in a while you'll have a horse that doesn't do that and, and look straight at you but has that rock back thing. Watch that video and that'll kind of tell you how to deal with that particular situation. So if you've been, if you've looked on the videos on, uh, videos on like say the skills path, the hooking on, all those sorts of things, you can still do those things, but I would do them after all this and you'll, so the, the responses I would want out of the horses, because there's a lot of different exercises on that skills path on the ground, the responses I would want out of the horses would be the same, okay? Hooking on, I wanna be able to have a horse go, I wanna be able to draw them in, I wanna push them off. That should all be the same, that would all be the same. How I go about getting it would be a bit different, that's the thing. Um, a lot of the exercises on the ground, you know, there's real technical ones, you know, you're in the hind end while moving over, things like that. I found with this relationship path, by the time you get to asking for that, they already know how to do it. It's, it's, it's quite simple. I, think I mentioned earlier about connection and then a relaxation connection and then training. And I said, if you uh, do all that stuff, by the time you get to the training, it, it, it works. Well, I've been working with a, well, she was a weanling. She was a weanling last year. She's a yearling this year. And, and we'd done a lot of stuff with her, focus type fold stuff. And then when I started to actually work her online, like the first day I asked her to go around me online, she was really good at it. And the next day I went over to work her. And before I caught her, I thought I'd try it just loose and see what she'd do. And so this will show you what she did. And it shows you she's basically all the training's already done by the time we got to this point. So this is a yearling filly I've been working with a little bit. And uh, I did all, oh, Becca Tate and I did all the original, initial handling when she was still a weanling. And I've only just started doing stuff with her online, but the connection that we've developed with her all along the way, you want to chew that? The connection we've developed with her all along the way has made her really 
well connected to us but i'm going to show you something here i've never tried this before i, I did it a second ago <laughs> before i turned the camera on i'm like holy cow i got a, I got a video of that so i've never tried this before but right now i'm going to see if i can get her to go off around me and have a look at the shape in her body right here she's like a liberty horse i'm just going to step back draw her in here never tried it before and I used to do a lot of what I would call hooking on especially in the round pen and if those horses kind of left me I'd put a little pressure on and move them around until they're looking for a place to have a rest and I'd step back and draw them in and offer them a place of rest but it was more of a place of rest whereas what I've been on about lately you really get this connection I mean that there was crazy I mean I've not ever done that with her before and she goes around like you've taught this horse how to go around and carry their body a certain way that was very cool, wasn't it, darling, huh? What a good girl. I found with this relationship path, by the time you get to asking for that, they already know how to do it. It's, it's, it's quite simple. I think I'll, in the, the skills path, there's quite a bit of obedience, but I wasn't, wasn't as aware of where they were mentally. And I've, so, you know, if you, I think, you know, going through this relationship path first, you can still do every particular exercise in the skills path but do it with the stuff in mind that you learn the approaches that you learn in this relationship path um, so you can still watch and go yeah okay that exercise I think I'd like to do that but you would probably after going through this relationship path you'd probably approach that whole thing quite a bit differently and under saddle there's probably not a lot different I've, I've, I've there's a there's a few different things you know if you look up ear flicking if you if you are, uh, you know, probably the, uh, the stuff that breaks down a bit more under saddle would be anything about ear flicking. I found that working on that ear flick thing is, is uh, quite a game changer, and I won't go into it right here, but it's, it's something that you can work on, uh, you know, just look it up, ear flicking and, and, or ear flick, anything like that in the, in the ridden part, and that will make a huge difference too. But anyway, the big thing is first relaxation, second connection, third is training. When you've got the relaxation and the connection, you can work on the training, but if you lose relaxation or lose connection, you want to go back and get those two things back because those are the things that make the training easier. And it makes it easier, but I think, I think with the skills path, all you have to do to do the skills path is change what you've been doing. Okay, because a lot of people want help with their horses and when I, all I had was that skills path, people would come along and yeah, it would work. They would change what they were doing with their horse. So I think for the skills path, you've got to change what you're doing. I think for this relationship path, you almost have to change who you are. You know, there's a lot, it's, this relationship path is a lot more about being aware of your thoughts, being aware of your energy, being aware of what your body's doing. It, it makes, you've got to be a lot more present for it to work. But I think the whole being present part is probably... You know, it's the, it's the hugest part of the whole thing. I think that makes the biggest difference. And, you know, in the past at clinics, I said, you know, I'm not very talented. I know people who are talented, but I have a, I have a process. I do this first and this second and this third and this fourth and this fifth. And I can get somewhere because of that process. Well, I really think those people who are talented who don't appear to have as much process don't need as much process because they, the way they go about things, they connect with those horses from pretty early on. So anyway that's the relationship path that's kind of where to go on it uh, i hope you enjoy it because it's uh, definitely a fun journey